Hello, my name is Charles Udamba. I'm a blogger from Ghana. Today being my birthday, I want to use this opportunity to thank you for your great support over the years. Your likes, your shares, and your reads on windev.com have made us the favorite and number one entrepreneurship and business blog in Ghana and Africa as a whole. Expect more educative content and stories that will help push you on on your leadership, development, and entrepreneurship journey. I also continue to seek your support to help me in promoting entrepreneurship and technology in Africa. Currently, we have 59,000 Ghanaians and 50,000 Nigerians on this page. We also have a little over 1,000 Liberians. We have people from Sierra Leone, USA, uh, UK, Italy, South Africa, among others. So expect more tech news, entrepreneurship stories, and business interviews on windev.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and on LinkedIn too. If you have a story you wish to be published on windev.com, you can send it to admin at windev.com. I love you all for the great support. Thank you very much. All right, so now over to your questions. I asked you to send me your questions so that I will answer them for you in this video. I have some few questions that I will uh, answer right now. Uh, Nedred Saki is asking that, uh, what is the biggest mistake I did when I started blogging? I remember when I started my first website, um, I applied for Google AdSense monetization. And you know, the rule was simple. Make sure you don't click on any ads. And I was so naive, you know, so when I started, I wanted to make money. So I clicked on some few ads and I was blocked. In fact, it really it really affected because i just started blogging and i thought i could make some money from it i applied and they accepted me and i wanted to make quick money so for over three years i was not monetizing my blogs because i relied so much on google adsense i requested for other advertising options and they were not actually working for me so i would say that was one of the things i regret ever doing uh, when I became or when I started blogging. So Nedred, uh, if you are lucky and you have Google AdSense on your blog, never try to click on them. Hello. Never. Okay, and um, Osei Prempajimai asks, <laughs> how many hearts have you broken? Okay, uh, Osei Prempe, how many hearts have I broken? Um, none. Yes, none. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> okay, and um, okay, uh, Johnson Emmanuel is asking that what would be my advice for someone who wish to come and work in Ghana? Uh, Johnson, uh, whatever country you are, if you want to come and work in Ghana, the advice I can give you is that uh, know what you are coming to do. If you have a certificate, if you have all your papers right and you come, you can equally search for jobs like any Ghanaian graduate or uh, somebody who qualifies to get a job. The problem I usually have is that some come without any plan. So uh, I remember one time someone called me that he's coming, he's a Nigerian and he has come to Ghana and he doesn't even have a place to stay. You see, usually it's good that you know somebody, at least if you have a relative or a friend who has already come to Ghana. I think it's a good place to start from like staying with that person and then uh, trying to search for jobs but if you come and you have nowhere to sleep uh, things could be very difficult for you so Johnson this piece of advice could help and then Joel Yin uh, you said you are asking why uh, what made me abandon everything in pursuit of IT and what is my biggest regret as an IT technocrat or as a blogger um i didn't actually leave everything to become a blogger i wouldn't say that because i'm still teaching okay uh, i'm still in the classroom i'm also still schooling and i'm also still working at the radio station so there are a lot of things i'm doing aside blogging i'm actually not doing only blogging you see one thing is if you want to really pursue your passion sometimes you need to do it along with something that will be able to maintain you if you're not careful and you pursue it without having you know a backup plan you get to a point where you'll be stuck and 
you you have lost all your jobs and you don't know where to go so uh Joelin, i didn't abandon everything i'm still in the classroom and i'm still working with a radio station uh, which is helping me to pursue uh, the blogging that i'm doing now and then you're asking about my biggest regret yes i think when i started blogging i didn't actually have a plan of how to make real money from blogging you know i started because it was a passion i loved it but i realized i was spending so much if i'm to do things differently i think this time around i would have sat down plan of how to make money even before i started blogging because it was a passion i started it and i got to a point where i was paying so much for my hosting i was paying so much uh, for domain renewal i was paying so much for design so it got to a point where i had to even learn how to design websites so that i could manage my website very well because um the one who was managing it i was paying and i was also paying for hosting for domain renewals and i realized things were very tough so i had to learn how to develop websites so that i could do their managing myself so i think uh, that is my regret uh, that i didn't you know look at how to monetize or to make money from my passion before going in so if you also want to go into your passion i will first of all advise that you look at how to make money from it before you go in though because it's my passion i was able to pass through till i started making some few coins from it but uh, i think uh, it would be a good advice for you to start elsewhere monetize uh, think of way to monetize your talent before you pursue it yes and now i already said that uh my, my issue with google adsense so please if you also uh, if you're going to go into blogging you know it was one of my regrets never never ever click on any ads you see on your own website if it's for others fine but for your own never do it um clement gaskua forgive me if i mention your name wrong you are asking if it will be what well, what would be my advice to someone who want to buy Huawei P Smart uh, and then uh, Samsung Galaxy A53. These devices they have great specs. Usually, when I'm buying a device, I first of all look at the chipset, and these they are all budget phones, so you know they they their chipsets are not that high. I also look at the battery section. You know these two devices they all have 5,000 milliampere, hour, so I think the batteries are equal. When it comes to the camera section. I think the, the Huawei is way ahead uh, in terms of the back camera, but when it comes to the front camera, I think the Samsung is also very high over there. And then the side, the screen side, they are all huge. One is 6.67 inches and one is 6.5. I've ever used Samsung before, I've used Huawei before. These are all great smartphones, but it depends on the kind of brand you want. So I'd rather advise that um, you look at which brand you feel comfortable using. I have people who feel so much comfortable using huawei others feel so much comfortable using samsung i was using huawei i've used huawei i think huawei mate 8 i was using some before huawei mate 10 Lite. i used it before uh, and also uh, samsung i use samsung s9 i'm still using samsung s9 uh, and all these devices were so superb uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend um, one over the other i think they are all superb phones these two because the aspects are very closer so just look at the one I think your budget can afford and the one you think has the great specs for you. But personally, I think the aspects are almost close. There's, there's no difference between them. Uh, now, the, the, the last thing I want to talk about is that most of you were asking, when am I going to get married? When am I going to get married? Yes, um, my answer is that marriage is very personal. It's a lifetime journey. And I think um, one shouldn't marry because he thinks that people, uh, because people think he's old enough to marry. I think you need to marry when you are rest assured of yourself and when you know that you are making the right decision. Because um, your success and failure also depends on your marriage. The kind of person you marry could destroy everything you've built or could build an empire out of nothing. So. I think uh, since I'm the one who is going to go into it, if I'm not worried that I'm not married, I don't think you should be. Yes, I don't think you should be. I think we we 
need to make time for our own selves, build ourselves better, go into marriage, being a better person, and knowing that the person, this person I'm going for, I'm ready to stay with this person for the next 40, 50 years, 60 years, because I'm not going to marriage and then go out. I don't have that in mind. Uh, you know, there are some people who think that, okay, me, if I go into marriage and things doesn't work out, I'll just divorce. No, I don't have a divorce in mind. So I'm taking my time. Yes. If I feel like I'm ready, I'll just do that. If I feel like marrying before my next birthday, why not? I will. If I feel like it should be my next two birthdays, why not? So thank you very much, everyone, uh, for your questions. I really appreciate it so much. And I thank you for your support. This year, expect so much greater things for me from the month of september there's going to be a lot of videos there's going to be a lot of content thank you very much for a great love i love you all bye bye